each other. Uh, I just need to uh, publicize the URL now. Okay. Dropping open StreamUp US and pasting the link there. I should also send out an email. Is it, is it fine to just send out an email with the link? Can people join us on this freaking link? I'm always so confused with... Uh, yeah, I've never done this before, so I'm assuming you can. I'm going to ask Martin. Martin is a specialist uh, when it comes to... Jim's got the same background, too. Hey, Jim. Can you can you hear us, Jim? I think you're chi Jim. I think you're still uh, muted. Is it muted now? It said out a hardware error, but I think it was wrong. Serge, he actually has a white background. I get I get to be in a hangout with the famous E and D's. <laughs> Ian Dees has added Google Effects. Ian Dees has added you, YouTube. Oh, like, <laughs> so, dude, Ian, like, it, usually what I hang out over when people start to use Google Effects. You know, I'm just <laughs> saying. You know, don't kill, don't kill your own mappy hour. It's horrible. I thought, actually, the really funny thing that happened was that for some reason I hit like uh, Command P on one of our. Yes, for some reason I hit like Command P in one of these hangouts where people started to do this. Yeah. And I'm on the fridge now in our office. We have like this picture, you know, with like uh, John and Martin and myself, and I think it's Jim, all like, you know, dressed up to the nine with Google effects. <laughs> and people like in the office are making fun of me now, you know, for being on the OpenStreetMap US board because it just looks like a freaking carnival. <laughs> it is. So I've got one sort of serious thing. Oh, my, my light's all messed up. Um, one sort of semi-serious thing, which is um, I, I found so I, I found a way to make the, the 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 expansion bot much much faster, um, and so we should have ninety percent coverage of the U.S. Probably well, I'm going to be out of town, so I'm not going to run it while I'm out of town. But within probably two weeks, we should be ninety percent done, and then I'll work on the last ten percent. After that, so awesome. Yeah, it was just going stupidly slow, and I just couldn't couldn't take it. So I went out and found a different way of doing it. Sounds good. Oh, so I hope. I hope everyone else is actually. Ooh, we get to find out about Soupy Bot and all kinds yeah. of stuff. Um, how do you get a link to this thing? To the Hangout? Yeah. Yeah, so I think this is the link here, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh. Yeah, I think this but is the link. How do you find the link? Uh, I've got, like, in my uh, pop-out window, there's actually an address bar. So oh, okay. I, you just use that. Do you have one? Yep. Yeah. I think I just used that. But you never know with Google, you know? You would think Google respects the Internet, you know, but they don't. <laughs> now, is this a restricted... So, like, when you create this... So, last time I tried to create a Hangout, I thought I had to make it public, but I guess I made a mistake. So, what's the setting for the Hangout? So, you can... Before you start it, you can... Before you start it, you can uh, choose whether or not it's a public Hangout. If it's a public Hangout... Or hang out on air. If you hang out on air, you're going to to broadcast to YouTube. What is that? That's my my computer is trying to melt me. Something is going on here. Can you guys hear the fan or hear my wife laughing? Your 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 wife laughing. Okay, good. <laughs> So is there a link that I can send someone 
that's yeah, um, on the air now? Yeah, it, just paste a link in the chat, and I'm sending out right now on one on the Talk US list. And I've already posted it on the OpenStreetMap US blog. Is there a corresponding um, live, like view only? How does that work? Yeah, that's like, the YouTube link. Yeah, so where's the YouTube link? I'm sending it out right now on Talk US. Okay. One second. Ah, okay. What is this thing doing? Where did you send it? Ian, these, Ian, are you on? Are you on? Uh, on Talk US? I am. I think. Great. Cool. I'm just sending the invite now, and we're on. Um, I was thinking that Martino was actually going to to join. Uh, John, I think we only had half an hour, so I'm not surprised he's not on. So I'm a little bit uh, surprised that Martin is not on the chat. Maybe his problems. Logging on or something. Okay. So where's this link? I just sent it out on Talk US. Oh, it can take a while to. Uh, can you send it on IRC? Well, let me do one. I thing. will. I have it in my clipboard. I will paste it. Sorry, yeah, it could have made could have made this a little bit easier. Um, here's Thank the. You. Yeah. Here's the, the Talk US message. Boom. I just got the talk US message. Oh, I got it now. I lost my razor, so I have a small real beard, too. I'll add a Google effect here in here. <laughs> John's funny. It hasn't started yet. It'll get more serious, don't worry. Yeah, let's get more serious here. All right. Here is fresh. Look at all these nerds. Oh, there he goes. Somebody says it hasn't started yet, that they can't see it on YouTube. I can see it on YouTube. You can? Yeah, oh. I just brought it up for a few seconds. Yeah. It might be because you're on it that you get to see it. Oh, okay, never mind. It is working, apparently. 
Right. Just did the life embed on the post. Okay, Paul. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey. Can you look at that link? Did it work? I think it did. You don't have to. Into the chat. The last thing I have to use is when I get done with it. Okay. Hey, Toby. Hello. Uh, <laughs> great. All right. Oh. We've got a few hey, people. Paul. What's Toby? Your name? Oh, and I'm uh, doing a time machine backup. Wow, we're just multitasking here. Thanks. Very good. Nice. Paul, it's still light. Me. Paul, it's still light over where you are. No. It just looks uh, like that. You see, where I live, we've got this little thing called electricity, which we use to power lights. Ah, damn it all. <laughs> That's a whiteboard behind him, not a mirror. Yeah, right now. it looked like an open window, like a like a window uh, with sunlight outside. Mm. Hey, Kathleen. You're muted. Or something. Or you're muted or you're mute. <laughs> or maybe she's just not talking. Yeah, she's just okay. eating some. She's eating something weird. Very good. So, should, should we get on the way here? Yeah, let's do it. Welcome to Mappy Hour, everybody. Uh, Ian Dees is joining us today. <laughs> Kathleen is not eating anything. Ian Dees <laughs> is joining us today. Uh, who has uh, been maintaining uh, the OpenStreetMap US servers for a long time, and I'm totally looking forward to getting a walkthrough from him uh, of uh, what we have online now and what we can offer here as a service to the community. I know that most of the people who are, or actually everybody <laughs> on, the, on the chat here from the, from the, who's on the chat here on the, on the Hangout is actually a, an old timer. Um, but uh, just for anybody joining in from YouTube, uh, Ian's been with the OpenStreetMap project for a long time and has been also on the OpenStreetMap uh, US um, Foundation board for a little while. And somehow along the lines, he got sucked into or motivated uh, into uh, <laughs> maintaining OpenStreetMap US servers. And I'm totally curious to see what he has uh, to tell us today. So Ian, take it away. Awesome. So um, I'm. I got interested in the servers mostly because um, I was able to find a bunch of people that were willing to donate servers to us. And so we got free stuff uh, a few years ago to do OSM related things. Um, and I, the, the initial intent for those servers was to do things for o the OSMF. Um, I was trying to get XAPI stuff going and trying to get tile rendering going, but um, real life got in the way, and so um, when I got back to this whole server thing, I convinced OSMUS to buy a server, and um, now it's been running for about three years now, and it's been doing little behind-the-scenes things, and I think... Um, the goal of this is to try and get people like you, quote unquote, old timers and the noobs, to uh, actually use the system uh, so that we can uh, take advantage of it. So, uh, the, the, you can see what on my screen here, um, what I'm planning on talking about, uh, but the goal of this is to see what is already happening and 
to uh, try and get some feedback from you guys about what we should do to make more use of the hardware. So um, let's start off with talking about what we have. Um, let's see here. I have a beautiful wiki page. Let's see, where is it? So there's um, three servers that are running right now. There's two servers here, this guy, Toluene, and this one, Nitrile, that are running uh, on at, at in donated rack space in St. Paul, Minnesota. They both aren't doing anything related to OSM other than keeping their rack warm, um, mostly because they're pretty slow. They were donated from Wikimedia, donated by Wikimedia uh, quite a while ago. And um, at the time, they were slow, so they're extra slow now. But um, they are, I, I was hoping to get Grant to give us um, the ability to do tile caching on them. But the more interesting one here is this benzene server that is running at Open Source Lab in Oregon. Um, they, this is the one we spent actual money on, and we have semi-fast disks and semi-fast CPUs. They were pretty fast back then, but they're less fast now. Um, it has 64 gigabytes of memory. This number is wrong. Um, and is currently running an older version of Ubuntu. Um, let's see, I heard somebody beat me in. Okay. Um, let's see. So that the that's a pretty good overview of what the hardware is. It's nothing really particularly special. Um, the the drives are slightly better than consumer grade. They're Velociraptors, um, and yeah, that's about it, really. Not very exciting. Um, so on on those. Oh, oh, wait, yeah, yep, I know that the link is a little bit hard to see. So if everybody would to follow along on that wiki page, that's uh, this this page is linked from the OpenStreetMap US post uh, for the announcement today. This is the latest post. If you go to OpenStreetMap US, there's a link on it that says servers. Just follow it. Yeah, that's that hardware page. And then the other link on here, there's a. Oh, I'll point that out later. Um, and also, if you do a search for servers or OSM servers or something on the wiki, it's like the second page. It's the one that Grant didn't write. Um, so on that server, that benzene server, the one that is relatively quick, we, ha <laughs> we have um, a OSM to PGSQL database. That's the standard. Um, for the default style, and it gets updated every hour, uh, mostly because um, when I tried to do minutely updates, it wasn't fast enough. But I think I've tuned it enough so that it will do minutely updates now. Um, but I haven't figured out a good way of switching from hourly to minutely updates. So uh, if there's any tips on yeah, that. Yeah, I, I can help you with that. Also, uh, I'm you may want to re-import with flat nodes because it's a lot faster for a planet-wide database updating. Uh, I mean, Errol, is, Errol has uh, OSM to PGSQL database now, and that's a RAID 5 array of consumer drives. Okay. And so flat nodes um, has a separate file that is... It, yeah, it's got, it needs something like a 16 gig file, and if you can stick that on an SSD, it's good, but even if you can't, it's for when you're handling a planet worth of data, it's a significant benefit. If you're handling an extract, it's not. But uh, you've got an entire planet loaded, right? Yep. Yeah. But then Don't you want flat anybody, nodes. Though. Well. Yeah. Okay. I'll it, give that a try. It's, it's so much easier to do the, just an entire planet than uh, an extract when you're talking about something as big as the U.S. Anyways. Yeah, I will add that to my notes. I was planning on redoing it anyway, based on. Uh, I was hoping to buy an SSD later. Um, you might also want to consider this in light of that, the fact that 
the OSM F dev server in London now has a database on it as well. So, okay, it, its usefulness has gone down. Got it. Um, so that yeah, you're right. The the um, the OSM to the PGSQL database is it will render uh, the regular Mapnik style, but the reason it's there is because uh, I use it for other things like the Tiger comparison layer. Um, I think Mikursky uses it for his some of his processing. Um, so it's it's more about using the data that's in it than rendering the default layer. Um, oh, we also do the Cardo layer based on that. Um, so another thing on that in there is uh, the Tiger database. I imported the roads from both Tiger 2011 and Tiger 2012. Um, the initial intent for that was to do the road name layer that is in um, uh, Potlatch right now and some of the other editors. But it, it can also be used for other neat comparisons if you want to use it for that. Um, so let me show you, see if I have that ready to go here. So for example, um, I made this thing a while ago to try and get a comparison between OSM, uh, current OSM and Tiger 2012. And so I think the green is Tiger 2012 and the red is OSM. So you can see areas where there's data in uh, OSM, or sorry, in Tiger that's not in OSM yet, for example. The, the hope with this was that eventually you could, we could rasterize it and make a pretty graph for the entire US that would show where to, where to zoom in and edit as you zoom out, it looks kind of silly. Um, any questions so far? I'm going uh, to on really the, quickly. On the visualization for the last one for the tiger visualization that you just showed, I found out that if you like uh, make those lines um, just 50% thinner on uh, lower zoom levels, you get like a lot more um, visibility out of it. You can then use like zoom levels sort of like five, six, seven for getting sort of like a good overview of where like there are new roads. We did a little bit of work on that on the um, on, on the weekend at the editathon, uh, looking at Tiger roads and discrepancies between the Tiger 12 data and what we have in OSM. Um, for the places we looked at, Virginia and Colorado said truth is like most of the differences you find in new developments that have sprung up in the last five years, you wind up tracing a lot of like uh, a lot of like suburban homes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is what we got. And I, I realize that they're grass. Like, but um, question for you is is um, uh, like more along the lines of uh, the offer that we have here at hand uh, as OpenStreetMap US. If somebody wants to come and go like, hey, I'd like to use these server resources, uh, how do they do that? Well, that, I was going to point that out to you. Let's see if it's on my list. Should be. See, last point here. I was going to try and get people. So let me talk about that a little bit later. OK. Um, let me whip through the last bit here. Um, Specifically, like, uh, it's great that you're going to talk about this later. Specific, what I'm going to interest you about is, like, mostly, uh, I guess, there is always going to be a little bit of a need of uh, getting, uh, you know, getting showed around and getting, like, the first steps into the, into the infrastructure. So, like, uh, I'd, love, I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. Um, I, I let me talk about that here. Um, so all those tiles that were you were seeing um, are rendered with tile stash. I think I have some really recent mapnik running on there that Dane uh, put together uh, for his PPA. I think it's recent as of a couple months ago. So it's got some pretty good features in it. Um, and then lastly, on this server, you obviously could have a shell and um, storage. Uh, you could use up some of our one and a half terabytes of storage. And I'll also set up a um, directory for you if you want to do stuff on the web. I think 
uh, Mike Magursky is using that for his Green Means Go thing. So um, to get access to this, um, really all I need is an email from you, preferably um, preferably with an idea of what you want to do, mostly so that I can help you work with or work through um, the different parts of this server and where things are. Um, if you have no idea what you want to do, that's fine. Um, you can uh, just kind of say that you want to shell and you want to play around. And if that's the case, I can show you where things are and how to get access to the database and uh, that sort of thing. But if you have something in mind, I'd be happy to walk through with you specifically how to do that. Um, we can brainstorm with other people about how to make that work. Um, so yeah, if, if anybody in here in this listening to me talk wants to have a shell account and do stuff with this data, feel free to send me an email. Um, I guess hopefully my email is pretty obvious, but it's my name at gmail.com. Um, I think everybody in here knows my email address though. Um, yeah, so Alex, does that help? Or were you looking for other things too? Uh, and absolutely answers my question. If somebody's listening here in on uh, YouTube or that does not know Ian Beezer's address, it's also fine to get in touch with the OpenStreetMap US uh, <clears throat> organization through the contact form on, or to the contact page in OpenStreetMap US. Or You'll grab his email from the list archives. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah. Or just send emails to random people and eventually they'll find me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that too. <laughs> yeah, but specifically, like, we have the, the public email address that we have up on OpenStreetMap US is board at OpenStreetMap US and we can put you in touch with Ian. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah so um, so I, I also wanted to point out that the server is running the SoupyBot plugin for OSM that you see on the IRC channels. Um, it's in the background, it's doing some processing on the minutely diffs and doing some slight weirdness detection, but also it's reporting to the channel OSM-bot um, uh, the new user edits. Um, so it, when it can, it will try and geolocate or give you a reverse geocode on those edits. Um, it doesn't do anything like look up a way, so it will um, it will only show the location in the message if it has a node edit. Um, oh, this is what we get when it says like theme game aster nine thousand just started editing near craft Dutchy Touches, Louisiana, United States of America with change set. Yep. Okay, that's really cool. Do you think we can turn on something like that for uh, an edit-a-thon so that like, that bot responds to any change set that was tagged edit-a-thon? Um, it, it could, but right now it doesn't pay attention to change sets. Um, oh, gotcha. It doesn't pay attention to the change set feed. So it would um, take a little bit of work to make that happen, actually. A little bit, yeah. And well, also, we have to keep in mind that it would probably put too much traffic into the OSM US. Channel, yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, we could also have it forwarded onto a different channel. Yeah, it would be there would be probably something for like a sort of a website. I'm thinking it could be a pretty interesting visual to like pass around during an editathon. We just have like you know commit sets pouring in as people are, are editing throughout the talk, United States. Talk to Pascal because he's done it for past editathons. Oh, yeah, cool. No, he, he did one for he did actually did one for uh, for the Operation Cowboy as well, didn't he? Yeah. That's awesome. That's what I was thinking of. On a web page or on IRC? Web page. Web page with Ooh. little cute cowboy hats. That's awesome. It sounds like Mr. John Novak is saying that he also did something similar. Um, yeah, so the, that is a pretty simple... Um, that code is sitting on uh, my GitHub. Um, it doesn't it's not particularly complicated. Um, I did just add a feature to it that will complain about change sets if they're more than 98% um, of one particular note um, of 
one particular edit type or one particular geometry type. So if it's all nodes or if it's all creates and it's more than 2,000 changes in a change set, then it will complain about that. Um, oh, I bet the French love that if you've got it going in their channel. Yeah, um, it doesn't geolocate those complaints, but it does uh, spit them into OSM bot test. Um, I that was more of a weekend hack kind of thing. I'm not sure how useful it is, but moderately. Um, moderately I, I do the same. I do the same kind of thing. It'll yeah. uh, it'll reliably pick up any import because those tend to be um, or ordered uh, with curate curation of nodes first, and that that's normally over two thousand. Yeah, that's what I was looking for, and um, I, I've. <laughs> I caught Serge's um, bot doing his expansion and that sort of thing, so that's kind of fun yeah. to look at. It's somewhat annoying, but I have yet to hear a complaint about it on that channel, so it's okay. Um, so, it, any idea, if anybody has any ideas for what they want to see that that bot do, we could also change that um, beyond what Alex already said. Getting back, yeah. I've got something. Getting back to the server, if no one's got any bot questions. Yeah. So when would we want to run something on uh, this server versus running it on the dev server versus running it at home? Um, you, it's up to you. And um, I say we in general, as opposed to me specifically, because well, my home server is not normal. Yeah, I, I think most people don't have machines at home capable of doing anything planet-sized. Um, and so that's probably the target audience for this. It would be somebody who has an idea for some sort of data manipulation with OSM um, or related to OSM, and they don't have the capacity to do it themselves or they don't want to pay for an Amazon server. Um, so that that's the target audience. Um, I know that dev is uh, pretty crowded, relatively. Not um, really. What the issue, the issue? The issue there is Owl used to be running on dev, yeah, and that's true. it's not anymore. Dev is uh, it's not as powerful of a machine actually uh, in terms of disks, which is the main thing that matters for most of this stuff. But it, it's got more space, slower disks, and. Uh, yeah, uh, dev is Errol. Uh, it's in... I can't remember which university it's in in the UK. So I guess there are advantages if you're in the US, if you're doing purely US stuff to having a server in the US. But if you're on the... If, for someone on the East Coast, it's probably about the same. Yeah, I mean, it. it's up to... I mean, whoever wants to do it. That's probably why nobody's expressed interest. Um, I, I think um, To start out, I'd like to do something really simple that would that would just give 
people metrics um, for a particular area. Um, and the, the kind, of, kind of the underlying reason is to, um, for do, for wanting to do that is that um, people just don't really get together all that much here in the U.S. because they're so. I mean, people feel a sense of connectedness to like their their region or the, maybe even their state, um, but um, they're you, they're very often like too far apart from each other to actually get together. So to to kind of forge a sense of connectedness through data is that. Is that something that makes sense to you guys? And is that something that we could do, start building on, on, that, on that server, is my question. Absolutely. I think that makes lots of sense. Um, yeah. I, I think it would be interesting to provide some sort of system where anybody could write code that processes the, uh, the minutely updates. And it just consumes data and then you write the code that does the processing um, and then there's some output thing that writes out some data if you want it to. Um, so yeah, I think that would be pretty great. It just dep it depends on what sort of data you want to show for each area. Yeah, that definitely needs some more thought. If I, I'd be happy to take suggestions. I, I did r yeah. do a little write-up for it that I'll share. Um, but if I'm, I'd love to get some input on that as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think they're also just, just Martin. You know, th that's not only a good idea for the reasons you said, but also, um, you know, there have been various studies, economic studies, that have shown that, for example, if you tell people that you know that other people in their area are doing X, like saving energy or you know contributing to mm. charity or something that that overall all the numbers go up the people are just naturally competitive so mm. in fact such a such a thing could not only make people feel closer but also actually spur them into uh, you know into greater action and you could probably you know measure that difference right you know you could take the data the statistics before you have it in a particular area and then after you have it in a particular area and just see if there's a measurable Measurable difference. So I think that's a really great idea. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Yeah. Here's two more ideas. One is a fairly boring idea, and that's mirroring the minutely diffs because there's probably going to be enough stuff running on this machine that um, but once you get over about five different things consuming the minutely diffs, it makes sense to just have one thing consuming them from the UK and then everything else just pulling them off of a local server. Yeah. Um, I think OSL already has a mirroring infrastructure that we can take advantage of. Yeah, but the issue here is you want mirrors that lag behind a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've they, written some code that can do this, and they might have something as well. Yeah, they can do it. Um, the, other, uh, the other thought was uh, in uh, France, they've got an API mirror, which... Um, I, uh, w which uh, transparently mirrors the API. You set your API location to it, and it all uh, it, you can put everything through it. It'll go back to the main API for the put type requests, so editing stuff. And, but it'll have a local uh, mirror of the current state of stuff, so that if you're fetching something. Uh, so if you're doing, say, a map request locally of something in the U.S., it'll pull it off of local data instead of uh, instead of going back to the U.K. Now, I don't know if the server is fa is fast enough to justify that, but um, I that might be something. I, I don't think we have the disk space for that right now, but um, I, I don't I, think I don't think I don't think it's got the entire planet. It's not an it's not a Rails port. Instance okay. or anything like that. It's something that they wrote specifically for a local API cache, basically. Yeah. Um, I I think uh, that would be pretty interesting to try out. We do. We should find out if they have that code anywhere. Yeah, it's open source somewhere. I can I, I can get. I, I I suspect it's the type of thing that. Uh, it probably wouldn't do well on the machine with a bunch of other stuff running on it because you need it to be faster than, you know, you, you don't want it to be slower than uh, going back to the UK. 
Right. The, I mean, the other problem, of course, is obviously is that if you uh, East Coast, which is where a lot of people are, is mid-distance from it and the UK. The, this particular server is on some pretty fat pipes, so we, we should be able to go pretty quick. It, it's not so much the... Uh, yeah, the, yeah, but it's more of the disk seek time, and if you've, got, if you've got doing a bunch of other stuff, it's not going to be able to cache everything in RAM. I'll find out what they're... Uh, the person running it is away on vacation till February, but but I'll find out what hardware they're running it on as well and where the code is. Cool. Yeah, that would be good. So I've got a potential use case, and I wanted to know what you thought. Um, so like this Tiger bot, expansion bot, I don't, I mean, I th I mean it's it's working, and I've gotten it go to go a lot faster than it than it was, but um, I was, I've been always thinking, gee, if, if I could just move the processing, the processing is fairly lightweight. It's it's downloading and uploading that are taking all the time. So is that you know is that kind of thing? And I and you know we've we there's been discussions of other bots that I haven't discussed. Uh, you know because I'm not there yet, but I, I will eventually discuss on the, on the lists um, to see if there's interest and and you know consensus on running. But would that be a place to, that I could do that? Yeah, sure. I mean it. We have. But it wouldn't help. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't really help, it, but it would be off your, your system. The, the bottleneck is uh, going to be on the API end, on processing what you've uploaded to it, or uh, generating the map bounding bo the map call. It's, uh, mm, it's It depends so greatly on the type of queries that, that you can't make. In, in this case, you are correct. So in the Tiger expansion case, you are 100% correct, but there are other types of calls that I, that I would like to make in the future that there are no API equivalents for. Uh, right? so, so for example, give me, the, give me a tenth of a mile radius of this object. Yeah, right? overpass you know, has that. Overpass has uh, that. Well, so, okay, so basically no there's no help and there's no reason that I that I although it would st it would say it would take me some bandwidth i guess would be uh, yeah point. it's just that it, i mean that is part of the problem is that um a, when you're dealing with these unless you're downloading a lot of data the limitations are going to be disks on either your end or their end wherever you've stuck the database i'm doing si i'm doing similar types of queries like i'm doing find me an address that match it that where the street and the house number match, but not the city within a hundred meters of this point, type of right. thing. And I'm right. doing that against a list of twenty thousand points. Right. Yeah, this is it's actually it's something quite similar. So, oh, actually, so there's a, there's a question for you, Ian. Um, overpass for the U.S. Yeah, that would. I mean, overpass would be pretty awesome. Um, um, I've been uh, lazy on that because I was trying to juggle the disk space around, but um, that probably would work just fine. So let me ask you another dumb question, sort of a meta meta question. Um, so it looks like are, are there resources that you are either missing or would like to have, and I mean that in terms of financial or people or other resources that, that you would like to see and don't um, have? I mean, right now, um, I, it's going just fine. The, the, the moment we need more stuff, more resources, is when people start asking, asking me and this server to do more things. So if, if there are people that are asking me to do things uh, on this server, then we probably should start talking about what other resources need to be found. Um, yeah, so like uh, assuming, you know, like a, uh, you probably can imagine a couple of things that people could come up to you and go like uh, and would want to do on these servers. Like what would be like some of the first bottlenecks that we can that we would hit and what what, what would be like those investments that uh, that follow from that? Yeah, um, I have had a draft of something like that for quite a while, but I don't know where it is. Anyway, um, I, I think the thing that we would need to fix first would be to get an SSD, and in order to expand the storage at all, we need to get off of the 
all the disks right now are on motherboard uh, SATA ports, and so we oh. need to switch off of those, which means we need to reinstall mm. uh, and re-raid it, basically. Well, uh, are you using hardware raid? Oh, no, God. we're using okay. MD. Uh, yeah, you should be able to. Move. I mean, I, I have an MD set up at home, and I'm able to move. Uh, I, I've got a RAID card, uh, LSI, when I'm, I'm just using it as HBA, and I can move the disks between one and the other without any problems. Um, that being said, you may want to re be, because you'd be probably rebuilding to a bigger RAID, you'd have to rebuild it. You'd yeah, that's... I mean, that, it would probably take just as long to reinstall the OS and mm -hmm. re-import OS on PGSQL as it would to rebuild a RAID bigger and on faster disks. You can't, you can't, you can't grow an MD uh, admin RAID 10 array anyways. Yeah. So, I, I mean, we kind of would have to start fresh. Um, uh, we also need to figure out that the, the system is reporting 48 gigabytes of memory right now, and it should have 64. Um, so there's probably at least one bad DIM in there. So... There's just some some uh, general maintenance things that will probably end up costing about $1,000. That's that, it? That's nothing. Awesome. Um, yeah, I know. And <laughs> so um, those just need to happen. Um, and also the reason it's taking so long for me to come up with this is because Grant wants to have a, a U.S. Um, rendering server. So and we're trying rendering to work or together. Caching? Rendering. So we're trying to work together on that. Um, and so that might be something I will send a separate email about to Talk US. But I think specific to this server, there's probably less than $1,000 worth of stuff that needs to be bought and some time that needs to be spent to bring it into more usable state. Yeah. Yeah, and just like uh, Paul said, it, I'm, I already have, um, for those of you that were paying attention, on the, in the servers that are sitting in St. Paul right now, I have six one terabyte caviar blacks that are just idle right now. Um, I might pull those out and put them in uh, the, this server that's in uh, Oregon right now. So What about... Using toluene and nitrile as uh, caches for the dials. Um, mostly the um, memory. There is eight gig or yeah, eight gigabytes, and it's not particularly uh, very much. Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, if it was just one of them, I'd say it couldn't. I'd say it couldn't do it since they're on the margin of what's what is needed. But if you had both of them in parallel, might it be enough? Yeah, that I that's definitely something to think about. Um, the other problem is that they that Vizzy, the company we're doing uh, that we're that's donating, only gave us uh, ten megabit oh. up uplink. So, I mean, it it's still it we could saturate that ten meg mm -hmm. and it would help a little bit, but um, that's kind of why I haven't pushed it very far. Yeah, I can I can see ten uh, the entire uh, there is a breakdown by country somewhere, but worldwide it's around uh, you need around uh, two hundred and fifty megabit for all yeah. of the tile serving. Yeah, and I I think the U S was at like fifty or something um, back in March. So I don't think it was that high wow. of a percentage. It's mainly Germany. Yeah, no surprise. And really, do we want to be serving uh, default style sheet tiles anyway? That's kind of boring. Well, that's what I was just about to say. Uh, the the whole highway shield rendering business. Uh, yeah, I've done a little bit of work on that, and uh, I talked to Phil about it. I think there's a bug in there, but I might be able to look at that and get that up and running again. Yeah, that would be awesome. That was something I was gonna try and bring up again. Is any, of you, is any of you guys working with Andy Allen's uh, OpenStreetMap Carlo copy? I haven't looked at that myself. Nope. It I would be pretty nice, but haven't touched it. 
play with that. Yeah. I, I was actually thinking about, you know, Ian, your suggestion, which, uh, you know, about what it would look like if we got rid of the administrative data in OpenStreetMap and relied on government administrative data, um, you know, for, for both rendering and uh, geocoding, what, what that would actually look like. And that's definitely yeah. something I couldn't do at home. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I think doing um, administrative boundaries is an interesting problem. Um, we could have a whole different, I mean, Flickr already has a whole different um, project based, based on doing that. And um, it would be interesting to try and build up that hierarchy of, of administrative boundaries. I don't know that we would be, I, I don't think that we have enough time to do it, though. Just, we have also, the server's not really enough. Yeah. Not, not for what's going to be basically a planet-wide Neumann Atom install. Well, no, I was just thinking just, just, for, just for the, I mean, and, and maybe this is for a separate discussion, but, you know, I was just thinking, gee, you know, what, if, if, if we just sort of took some of that, I mean, yeah, I, I guess you're right. It, it would, that would require a large curation, but I was thinking U.S. only. Yeah. And, I mean, a U.S. only would be uh, an interesting project. By yeah, itself, it, for sure. it, I mean, it's still the type of thing that I take. I mean, the database import for it takes uh, like a month or something obscene for the planet. <laughs> wow. Well, what? Paul, Paul, I don't think we're talking about a nominatum. I think we're talking about just for rendering. Doing oh, an pure, OSM. Purely rendering? He, he had mentioned geocoding as well. For purely well, yeah, rendering. Eventually. But for purely rendering, yeah, that would be pretty easy. I mean, you just imp you take the shape files from whatever source, import them, and then you have to adjust your style sheets to pull from multiple sources, which is an after right. a day's work type of thing. Now, if it's any good, is a completely different question. But I, I think well, where it would be interesting is where you make it better, make the admin boundaries better, and like give it to Nate Kelso to include in his. Data set, mm. but I think that's a different. Yeah, it's a whole different kettle of fish. I just meant this would be something interesting, and it would be awesome if we could do it on U.S. resources. Yeah, because I yeah, could definitely. never do it at home, right? It, it it would probably also be good to have in the database um, a shared access to a few things, um, just imported directly from government data for this kind of stuff, and admin boundaries would be one of them. And once you've got that there, then it's pretty easy to stick it into a style sheet. Yeah. Well, oh, actually, I've, I've got another one, and I don't know. And actually, it's great that Martine's here, because this has been a question that's come up. And, and Alex knows this. In D.C. and New York, which is um, there are resources that we cannot import into OpenStreetMap that are still sort of semi-open. Um, you know, for example, transit data. Um, and we have talked, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about New York, for example, and, would, and, you know, it might be interesting if I could get some access to the some New York transit data to, um, you know, like, for example, bus routes, um, and then have something like Open Trip Planner on that. I don't know if, if that would be too big or not the right place for it, but would, would that be the type of thing that would be acceptable? Acceptable use. Yeah, I think it's I interesting, think but it's a pretty light. It's a pretty lightweight. Um, I mean, Open Trip Planner. I installed that on my my home server with my with local transit data, and that was wow. that didn't that mm -hmm. didn't really was what there wasn't really all that demanding. I'll have to talk to you later then, because I was under a very different impression. Hmm. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, I'm not saying that it couldn't be it couldn't be a good idea to host that to host that on. Um, on the, well, also, uh, was, was, was that Salt Lake City? Yeah, what are you saying? Well, <laughs> uh, the, the difference between the transit data in, in Salt Lake City and New York City might be different. Well, it's all, on, it's all underground there. What are we talking about? Well, uh, buses. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's some buses as well. Nobody yeah. takes the buses. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, I, um, I think... Uh, let's see here. I was the only other thing I was going to show off was um, some of the the rendering stuff. But that I, I think we the folks that are here 
I think understand what was going on. Um, so I think, uh, do you guys have any other questions specific to the server? Mm. Oh, I guess I should show, um, I, I had a link on there for, um, at the bottom of this servers page, there's a uh, well-hidden link to imagery. And um, there was a few weeks last summer where I was bored and I searched around for um, Arc REST servers and I started proxying them. Um, and I found a bunch of other ones that I haven't proxied yet. But um, the idea here is that it's a tile cache for local municipality imagery. Oh, um, awesome. So yeah, some of this awesome. at the time was pretty high quality. Um, but I don't see any 2012 now. But there's so like the, the USGS large scale that is in uh, Potlatch and although it's slow um, it works pretty well when it's already cached. So it, um, this is a really easy thing to do if you guys spot a Arc REST server we can cache the crap out of that. Um, are you and, are you pulling it from their pre-cached uh, uh, 5 12 by 5 12 tiles or using the export function? I'm using the export function mostly because most of these places don't pre-cache Google projections. Well, I know that some it's, of them do, it's, but... it's not Google projection. It's, uh, it's a different numbering scheme. It's a different projection. And um, so it takes a reprojection of scale to get into TMS tiles. But it it's a lot faster on their end, and that's often the bottleneck because the export function is pretty yeah. slow. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty slow. Um, and I I haven't seen any anybody... I, I'm not doing any manipulation of the image um, on the server side. Yeah. Other uh, than... I should chat to you later about my setup because I, I'm cash I was caching uh, one of them, and I ended up I ended up using their I ended up re scaling and warping their uh, pre uh, their pre cache tiles into my pre cache tiles. Right, and I I think um, at one point um, Eric from USGS and I were going to share tile caches for the large-scale imagery, but we kind of gave up on that. Um, so, if you see, I mean, this is mostly meant for one-off use. Um, I don't think I've actually used any of these in quite a while. Um, that's another thing that this is doing. Um, yeah, hey, Ian. I think thanks. that's it. Yeah, thanks so much for your time and uh, walking us through that. Um, that was really awesome. Uh, again, if anybody wants to get on these servers uh, here on the Hangout or listening in on YouTube, drop Ian a line. Uh, if you haven't catched this, you caught his email address. Uh, feel free to just uh, drop a line to board at OpenStreetMap US. We can hook you up, get on those servers, uh, and also more than happy to get you started. Uh, I will, Ian, I will uh, maybe get in touch with you. I uh, still don't quite know on how we're going to um, host those Tiger alignment uh, tiles. Uh, this may be something that we want to do on the OpenStreetMap US servers, so I may just get in touch with you personally. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, again, like, really thanks so much for walking us through this. And also, like, uh, in terms of uh, here from uh, speaking for the OpenStreetMap US board, uh, if you want to do improvements to this infrastructure, let's figure out on how, to, on how to pay for that. Yeah. Okay. And and all you guys listening still that would I I think I'm going to start a thread to talk about some of the ideas that we have here require things that we should make sure and ask for in a funding request or in a I, the the reason um, we were talking with Grant was because he suggested a uh, fundraiser so that would yeah. be something absolutely so. Very good. Boom. <laughs> now, now we see your face. <laughs> yes. It's just a website talking to us all the time. 
the pirate pad. Hey guys, um, thanks so much for logging in. Uh, I'm going to leave the chat now, which is probably going to kick off everybody else, as I'm the one who started it. Um, looking forward to see you guys again. In two weeks, we'll do another Mappy Hour. We're going to announce it on our blog, blog OpenStreetMap US. There's no sad topic yet. It's going to be at least just a casual hangout. Maybe we'll come up with uh, with a concrete theme again. Cool. Have a Take great week, guys. Cool. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Bye. 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 Oh, Ian. Um, yeah.